A quick video analysis for a player I've been working with. Hopefully it can help anyone else who's watching this video and struggling with their forehand. But one thing that I noticed in real time is the contact point consistently gets quite far away. And what happens there is it it becomes difficult. Well, for a start, it's not very solid on contact. This is not the most solid position you can get into with the racket dropping this far below the wrist and being so far out in front. So I don't think the stability is really there. But you also struggle to turn over the racket. So now the forearm is, or sorry, the arm is a little bit straight. You're not able to really turn over the forearm and bend that elbow because you're having to manipulate the swing a little bit because the contact point is so far away. Now if we run this through, that one's a little far away as well. And like shots like this, the strings are facing the floor, which is fine. But as you start to swing at the ball, it's very important that you supinate. And what that means is you turn the forearm in. I'll explain it in a little bit more detail in a second. But right now, I think the strings are facing the floor a little bit too much because you don't really supinate as much as you could. It's more like pat the dog, which is something I don't recommend anyone does. If, you, uh, if you've heard a coach say that. So this frame here, you see the racket head dropping below the wrist. So it becomes a little bit wristy and not as stable and that affects how the rest of the shot is gonna be played. So if we move on here and we look at Djokovic, you can see very similar start, strings facing the floor, but supinating the forearm here. So turning that forearm in, that squares up the racket head the contact point is going to be close. This is a lot stronger and firmer. If you had to like stop a, you know, stop a car with this racket, this would be a lot more firm position to really have that leverage than where uh, than where Adrian's at. And this is going to allow the forearm to turn over and generate that racket speed without losing the stability. So this is a video from the last lesson, which I think is a huge improvement. Got a similar Djokovic start here. Strings facing the floor, fine. But the supination, this, it's really supinating the forearm there, which allows the racket to square up. Contact point closer, and that al allows the arm to turn over. So you're getting that real snap of that forearm to generate the, the racket speed. And on this one, you can really get to see it. Supinating the forearm. Racket squares up, contact point a little bit closer. Kind of missing a frame there. We can turn over that arm. So that's a lot firmer, solid shot, but you're still getting that racket speed. But as you play that top level, you know you can't be all flimsy with the wrist. You've got to use the wrist, but it's in a particular way where it snaps back and releases. It's not dangling all over the place. Now I want to finish by showing you a, a clip of Nalbandian, who you wouldn't normally say had an amazing forehand, but I just want you to see how solid this hit is. And he's again turning that racket over with the forearm. I'm gonna just play it with the sound on after. And again, you can just take lessons from this. You don't have to copy it, but just notice how solid it is. And the racket speed comes from not a wristy shot, but how fast you can move the racket by turning that forearm over quick. And you can't do that if you're dangling the wrist below the hand or you're too far out in front of you.